Alright everybody, this is Muth24, and this is part 2 of my Bioshock Versus video. I left off part 1 talking about the Big Daddies and the Big Sisters, and so for part 2 I'm going to start off talking about the Splicers. Uh, these are your pretty uh, traditional enemies, they're kind of the grunt soldiers of the game. And there are a couple different kinds, there are the Leadhead Splicers, which are gun-toting Splicers who... Uh, use machine guns and pistols and shotguns to attack you. There are the Houdini Splicers, which will teleport around the level. And they're not per se hard to kill, but they are hard to keep track of sometimes, especially when there's a lot of them running around. There are also the Spider Splicers, which can crawl from the ceiling and uh, throw like blade boomerangs at you, and they're really fast moving. There are the Thuggish Splicers, which will use uh, wrenches and pipes to beat you down, and these are pretty much the most standard type of enemy there on the game. There's not a whole lot to the Thuggish Splicers. In Bioshock 2, there is a enemy called the Brute Splicer, and basically these are Splicers that have abused the uh, use of Adam so much uh, that they have just become these giant hulking behemoths. They will chuck stuff at you, they will chase you down and beat you up, and they are a challenge to take down. Not as much as a big sister per se, but they're still uh, pretty challenging. Now, to take these guys down, you're going to have a number of weapons at your disposal, and they're largely the same between the two games, although arguably much stronger in Bioshock 2, as far as the damage they uh, inflict. In Bioshock 1, you're going to have the wrench, which is used to attack enemies at close range, and also to unlock different areas by, you know, beating down a wall or clearing some rubble. You're going to have the pistol, which is, you know, a fairly low rate of fire, but it does a decent amount of damage. You're going to have the machine gun, which is a much faster rate of fire, a uh, better range on it. You're going to have the shotgun, which is a close range, but it's going to deal a lot of damage. You'll have the grenade launcher, which, as its name implies, launches grenades. Uh, this one has a very limited amount of ammo that you can find around the game, so you're going to want to use it sparingly. I usually use it against big daddies, just because it deals a lot of damage at once. You're also going to have the Chemical Thrower, which I thought was one of the most pointless weapons uh, in the game, just because of the fact that it shoots electricity, liquid nitrogen, and fire. So you've got a flamethrower, and uh, basically like it. Basically got the elements of Inferno, Ice Storm, and... Uh, or sorry, Incinerate, Ice Storm, and uh, Electro Bolt, all in one gun. Which is silly because you have all three in your plasmids probably by that point. So, why you need it twice, I don't understand. And then you have the crossbow, which is the closest thing you're going to get to a sniper rifle. It's got a decent range on it. Uh, it takes a while to reload, but any shot you give or get, get on an enemy is going to deal a lot of damage. Now, in the second game, instead of the wrench, you're going to have the drill, which I feel is a far more practical weapon uh, simply because it's still close range, but it's going to deal a lot more damage. And you can also do this drill dash attack later on in the game, where basically you charge it up and then hit another button to dash an enemy and knock them backwards and deals a ton of damage. Uh, you, but at the same time, you can use it to get uh, through different areas in the game, much like you did with the wrench. The rivet gun uh, replaces the pistol, and it's got a much faster range of fire. It does a lot more damage. Uh, you have the gatling gun, which is obviously the upgrade of the machine gun. And it's just huge and deals a ton of damage. And you can mow down enemies pretty fast, but the exchange is that you're fighting a lot more enemies at once. So you've got a bit of trade-off with every weapon in this game. Uh, the shotgun is pretty much the same uh, damage infliction in the, as in the first game, but it's a lot shorter range. Uh, basically, this one's a double-barrel shotgun, and uh, it's much smaller. The spear gun is the closest thing you're going to have to the uh, crossbow, and this deals a ton of damage. A lot of times you can get a one-hit kill with it because it'll pin enemies to the wall. And you also have the grenade launcher again. Not a whole lot different with this one, except for the fact that you can shoot uh, grenades and proximity mines with it. So, your weapons are varied, but again, there's a very limited amount of ammo you can find in the game for this weapon, so you're going to want to use it sparingly. Now... The big, one of the biggest selling points of this game is the use of plasmids. And there are a couple core plasmids you're going to be using a lot, uh, being uh, Incinerate, which is your fire ability, Electro Bolt, which is your lightning ability, uh, Ice Storm, which is your freeze ability, and then there are 
a number of other ones. I suppose telekinesis is still one of the core ones as well. And you can pick up objects and chuck them around. Um, there are a couple other ones that are less conventional but are still pretty fun to use, uh, such as the insect swarm and the uh, uh, security um, security bullseye, where basically you chuck a, uh, a plasmid homing device on an enemy, and then every security bot or camera in the area will start firing on him. Uh, you can also do a hypnotize, which will turn a splicer temporarily to your uh, aid, and will attack other splicers. So, you're going to want to use these to a... Uh, it's going to take a while to get used to using these different plasmids in tandem with one another, but you can upgrade them in both games. Now, in the first game, when you upgrade them, it's just going to basically create more damage, or in the case of, like, Ice Storm, it's just going to freeze the enemy for longer, whereas in Bioshock 2, it actually changes how you play the game. Uh, for instance, if you upgrade uh, uh, Incinerate, it's going to uh, shoot a stream of fire out for a longer time, and you can kind of angle it however you want. If you upgrade Electro Bolt, instead of just zapping one enemy, if you shoot it at one enemy, the... Uh, Electro Bolt will jump to two other enemies and zap them at the same time. Uh, Cyclone Traps, you can place them initially in the game just to shoot splicers up, up into the air and, you know, uh, confuse them. But later in the game, you can actually add other elements to the Cyclone Trap. So you can have a Fire Trap, you can have an Ice Trap, you can have a Lightning Trap, etc. Which is a really cool uh, way to change up your gameplay and helps in your gather sections. Now, the soundtrack of this game uh, is going to have a lot of uh, pieces from the 50s and 60s. Uh, it really captures the mood of the era um, more outside of the city than in, but it, it really is an interesting way to play off the game. It, it's kind of reminiscent of uh, Fallout, for those who have played those games. Uh, and honestly, it's it's, it's beautiful. I, I think it's a really cool soundtrack, a uh, really interesting way to go, uh, to hear all these old songs uh, playing as, as you're going through the city. Uh, there are some points where it's, it's kind of ironic, uh, the songs they choose for the events happening. The art style is uh, also very reminiscent of the 50s and 60s. You're going to have, like, sort of propaganda posters uh, for both Atlas and Ryan uh, in the city. Uh using more of the Art Deco style. Uh, you're going to have some, uh, obviously, darker uh, level designs uh, for, for some levels. And the level design overall is pretty smart. Uh, it works a lot better in Bioshock 2, though. There are a couple areas in the original Bioshock where you go around in a circle and not realize it, um, just because of the way like the halls were set up and everything. And it's a, it's a minor complaint because it only happens a couple times. But in Bioshock 2, the fact that the levels are bigger and more open instead of being these really narrow tunnels uh, works to its advantage. Uh, you have a lot better um, mobility as far as combat is concerned. And you just you don't get lost as easily. Uh, the multiplayer in Bioshock 2 is... Brilliant. I, I really I really think they did a, a bang-up job on this, uh, in a good way, obviously. Uh, you have a Civil War um, mode, which is basically a team deathmatch mode. You can also do just a normal deathmatch. Uh, there are Capture the Sisters, which is essentially Capture the Flag with a little sister. There's a, a Turf War, which is a, like a land grab type. And you have a level-up system that basically, no matter whether you lose or win a game, you'll get some experience points, but obviously you're going to get more for winning the game and getting more kills and hacking more uh, turrets and vending machines and doing some plasmid trials and combos and everything. So uh, it's really uh, it it's a really rewarding uh, system and honestly, I think Bioshock 2 multiplayer is a lot better than some of the other um, multiplayers for games that are primarily centered around the story mode. Uh, which is is nice to see that they you know they they put all the extra work into the story mode, but didn't like slack off on the multiplayer. So I'm gonna end it here for part two. Um, we'll come back with part three, and I will go over the last bits of the game, and I will see you then.